So now we move into 1.4, um, which is the other types of sampling that there are available. So simple random sampling is, is kind of a basic building block, sort of like a Lego block, if you will. And there are other types of sampling that we can do besides that, or sometimes in conjunction with simple random sampling. All right, so the first of that is those is called a stratified sample. It's obtained by separating the population into non-overlapping groups called strata, and then obtaining a simple random sample from each strata. The individuals within each stratum should be homogeneous or similar in some way. So they've got a lovely picture here. So you have a population that has all sorts of people, knows they're numbered 1 through 12. And what they do is they separate the, the men and the women. Those are called stratum, right? All the men are alike, all the women are alike. And then they get a random sample from each of those strata, okay? And that's the steps here. Divide the population into strata. From each stratum, obtain a simple random sample of size proportional to the stratum, right? And then use all the members obtained in that sample, right, to make your sample. So an example I'm giving here is several years ago, the City Council of Tempe, Arizona, oopsie, was being pressured by citizens group to install bike paths in the city. The council members wanted to be sure they had the support of the majority of taxpayers. So they divided all homeowners into three strata, upper, middle, and low income, right? So all the upper classes, then all the middle class people and then all the lower class people. And then they got a random sample from each of those groups. That way it wasn't just upper class or just lower class that were they were talking to, but it was everybody, right? So they got a f um, several people from the high, several people from the medium, several people from the low. That's a stratified sample. All right, now what about a systematic sample? A systematic sample is when you obtain the kth individual from the population. So for example, if you've got them listed out from one through 12, then you get, you know, person, you, we're going to get every third person here. So person number two, one, two, three, person number five, one, two, three, person number eight, one, two, three, person number 11, right? So it's sort of like when, you know, I don't know, you're the 500th customer to cross the bridge, you get a prize, you know, that kind of thing. Or <laughs> you're the, you know, 30th person to come to airport security, you get frisked, you know, <laughs> who knows how it works, right? All right, so that's how it, um, in theory, how a systematic sample works. It's got a little bit more work to it in, in terms of algebra. So you obtain the population size. So for example, let's suppose we're talking about Tempe, Arizona. We've got every city block numbered from 1 to 1,000. It doesn't really matter how you number them, but you just number them. And you want 20 houses. So you've got 1,000 thousand blocks to look at, if you will. You want to get 20, okay, or 1,000 houses to look at. Technically, they should be the same thing, so I'm just going to make them both blocks and blocks, and we'll work from there. Anyway, so you take the 1,000, you divide it by the 20, and that gives you 50. Okay, so you round down to the nearest integer. If that had been like 50.3, you would have rounded down to 50, right? 50.6, you round down to 50, right? Um, that value is called k, and then you randomly select a number between 1 and k. You call this number p. So we randomly select, say, number 23. Right, number 23, you're the first winner. So they start with 23, and then, then you take 23 plus 50. So 23 plus 50 is 73. Then add on 50 again, and that's 123. Then add on 50 again, and that's 173, and so on. Up until the last one. The last one will be this formula. P, which was, you know, let me type this up, hold on. There we go. So P was 23 plus, okay, I wanted 19. See, so it's really 20 take away 1, if you will, times k, and k we found was 50, okay? So that's 23 plus 19 times 50. Let me go find that in Excel real quick. Equals 23 plus 19 times 50, 973. Okay? Gotta love Excel. 973. There we go. So that's that particular example. All right? And that's where the last one comes from. And if you know the last one's 973, then you know that one's 923. I mean, you could technically find them all, but who wants to do that? I'm telling you that in particular because my math lab sometimes wants like the first three and then the last one. So this formula right here will find the last one for you. All right, I'll see you next time to talk about cluster samples.